Today we're talking to Dang. Now Dang is a five foot two American with Asian heritage, spending half of the year on a ship as an engineer, fixing stuff with other dudes. If you've ever thought your dating life is hard or you have a lot of excuses why you're not where you want it to be, maybe rethink that because Dang has it harder than you. And that's why I'm really proud of him and really excited to share his story because he joined the five day immersion program last year, which we're by the way running again, so you can click below for the info. And then he continued the coaching in the social transformation program throughout 2024. I'm excited to share his insights, his lessons, and his results working with us. Please enjoy. I can't change that I'm Asian and short, it's just mm -hmm. what it is. So obviously dating apps are gonna eliminate me out of the pool. What's up, Dang? How are you doing? I am doing well. I uh, got back from Vietnam recently and I'm just kind of like readjusting to being back in America, kind of like a reverse culture shock. But it was a, a very fun experience and I took a lot of um, the social freedom stuff and just approaching with me to Vietnam. You know, when's the next time I'm gonna be there? And it was, it was just a great, great place to experiment and a great place for me to like find myself, but also like put myself out of my comfort zone. Like I'm already outside of my comfort zone. Why yeah. not push it a little bit further? As context for the audience, Dang did a workshop, a five day immersion program with me and my team late last year. And then you joined the six month mentoring program. Maybe let's start at the beginning, beginning before we even met. Describe how was your situation? Where did you live? How was your dating life? And why did you even consider in the first place to get dating coaching? So before I even broached the idea of dating subject, my dating life was essentially non-existent. I had zero clue of what the hell I was doing. Will you marry me? No. I didn't know like how to approach, how to date. My I think like every guy has a default like, oh, I'll just use Tinder or Bumble or some form mm -hmm. of online dating. And then obviously that didn't go out didn't work nearly as well as I thought. At the time I was um, off from one of my work trips. I was living in Dallas and my plan pretty much was just to go to bars or go to like music venues and just wait for someone or some, some cute girl to just randomly approach and talk to me or have some kind of contacts. It was the cognitive dissonance was high. Like I was like, I would remember going home at night after going to like some freaking bar or something and like spending all this money and then just talk, not talking to anyone, not even guys, girls, just, just sitting there with my drink. And it was like very frustrating and very tiring. Yeah. And I think like I was introduced to your content, I guess the YouTube algorithm picked up on my frustration <laughs> and started jump, just like giving me like a lot of um, pickup coaches and all this, this dating and pickup content. I think like I vibed with your content the most because it was very balanced and very, um, I would say like holistic and as well, a lot of dating content focused more on like club and night game, which has its time and place, but yours was more like, this is how you live a more socially and, and engaging life, which yeah. I, I really vibed with. And then um, I saw you on one of Psychax's video interviews and I was like, oh, this guy. And then it's like, I got to see a more long form content and how you interacted with not just like girls because that, that's like infield videos galore are all over YouTube but then like how you interacted with like professional and all these other things like oh cool this seems like a cool with and then I saw one of your Instagram posts so like hey I'm running a free trial immersion thing I'm looking for a couple guys to come to Bulgaria and try this thing I was like I got nothing better to do and I need help with dating life because I have no clue what I'm doing and it's like all right flying to Bulgaria nice and yeah then, so, that's yeah. great. Very quick announcement at this point. Me and my team decided to do another five-day immersion workshop in Sofia this year. We're also coming to other cities. We're coming to London, Berlin, and possibly more. You see the exact schedule in the description of this video. So if you're interested to actually change your life like Dang did, click below, inquire. It's free. We're going to talk about the schedule. And let's get back to the video. What does a work trip for you mean? Because you half of the year or plus minus half of the year, you literally are not seeing any females, right? Yeah. Can you quickly explain the audience what your job is and how that environment looks like? Um, so I am a merchant mariner, particularly a, a marine engineer. So I work on ships and um, I do like three to four months on a ship and then I work and then I have vacation for like three to four months. And then it depends on the contract, but that's the general overall layout. And when I'm working, I'm like locked in. I'm on the ship 12 hours a day, six, seven days a week. It gets a little bit harebrained at times, but that means I, I don't have the opportunity to like walk off the ship and go have have a drink or go to a mall and like socialize and be around people of the opposite sex that's just yeah, it's exactly. not going to be there so it's it's 
your your social muscle atrophies after something like that. Yeah, so that's that's kind of the context of what my job is. So I, I don't have like a lot of time to socialize. So essentially with the boot camp or what, what your immersion meant for me was like value density, like a lot of value of dating and socializing compacted into four or five day boot camp. And it was like, <laughs> some days it was like, man, I am like tired and I am like, I just want to retreat into my little shell and just not even talk to anyone. But then, you know, the videos came out of like unpacking it slowly, like, oh yeah, I did this, I did this, I did that. And like, these are how, this is how I did it. And tremendously helpful also with like putting into context how many times you're gonna like, just bomb and how awkward some approaches are and then also you know there's always like the diamonds in the rough like the instant dates that i went on for like 45 minutes in bulgaria from just like randomly approaching a cute stranger i remember that it was interesting with you because you arrived and you looked like excuse me like hermit engineer you know out of a cave like you came with this like fluffy haircut and this like fleece pullover i was like okay the first thing you gotta do is turn you into <laughs> some artsy cool guy I still remember these cool pants and this handbag that we got you and the gray black Berlin kind of vibe how was that for you to go out of your comfort zone style wise even on that first day of the workshop that was a big change up for me because I'm an engineer I work around other dudes we don't particularly care how anyone looks as long as the job gets done gets done safely gets done efficiently fashion was just never something that was even salient or on my radar uh, it wasn't until I met you it was like oh yeah by the way surprise i'm short how, how tall are you like... i'm five two mm -hmm. yeah i'm being honest so five yeah. two is five two i'm not adding on more inches so like there's no point <laughs> if you're like five eleven and you throw on an extra inch to get six feet okay no one can tell the difference but when you're like below five five just be honest it's yeah yeah <laughs> i when i met you it's like yeah by the way dang fashion is something that matters because it's less about like trying to dress up in some Louis Vuitton jacket or something, but more like how you present yourself and how you like um, present yourself to the world. And that's kind of like the philosophy and the, the framework that I took from you and was like, okay, so how do I want the world to see me? Especially like, you know, engineers as well. Like a lot of blue collar workers, we kind of get a bad rap for like dressing like homeless people. <laughs> okay. I'm curious always why certain people just sign up for a workshop and others don't. You, as you describe here, were very spontaneous about it. You just said, oh, I didn't have anything better to do. Obviously, I gave a reduced price at this point. This was the first time and I was allowed to film you guys. So it was a good deal for sure, financially. But why do you think certain guys procrastinate for years and years and years? And you just said, this is it. I'm going full in on this. I think it comes back down to also how my psychology and psyche is set up. I'm an engineer. Um, I work on a ship. If there's a problem, you fix it or you're no longer on a ship, you're drowned. That's the entire, so like, I identified the problem when, when I was pre-immersion, pre-boot camp, pre-everything, just going to bars, hoping someone would talk to me. So I identified the problems, like you're an awkward and introverted and you have no social skills and you don't even know how to navigate social media. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. um, and then solution was to either toil away for the next five, 10, potentially 20 years to try and figure this out on my own or pay someone who has literally done this for decades, if not for, for like extended amount of time and has resources and this is like their bread and butter. Why would I not do that? Especially if it's like a discounted price. But um, I think also like, yeah, like also kind of comes back with engineering, like why work harder when you can work smarter? Right. And you have and the mindset that it can be learned that social skills is not something you're just born with how did you figure that out or how, why did you believe this i believe this because i have experienced my own personality change in my own life where there is um changing careers and then just having to reevaluate what it is that i valued so i know that personal change is possible and one told me that hey your personality is set in stone after you graduate high school i would tell that person to like grow up and actually go out personality is something that 100% changes skills can be learned because I, I know this once again from my own career like I had no idea what I was doing as an engineer but I learned those skills through repeated trial and error and pain and the mentorship of others and if that's possible in one arena of life what's stopping me from taking that to another arena of life dating social skills
etc. Right. So I know after the workshop, you had to go back to the ship. So you kind of went back into engineer mode. Tell us what happened when you came out of this masculine phase and you did some traveling and socializing. I came back off my ship. I had planned a vacation to Vietnam because I wanted to reconnect with um, the country that my parents were born in. I flew to Vietnam. I spent like maybe a few days kind of like still an introvert masculine mode where I wasn't really connecting or talking with anyone. And then some of the videos came out. I was like, oh, shoot, I remember doing this now. I remember doing this in Bulgaria. And then it's like, OK, I, this is I'm not going to have another opportunity like this where I'm 5000 miles from home. If I mess something up, no one's going to know it was me, first of all. And they're going to forget me because this is like an ocean separating America from Vietnam. So there was a, like a perfect little Petri dish for me to experiment and um, test out my social skills and i also had booked like several just touristy vacation stuff so i had like contacts to meet people which is where like a lot of the um some of the, my most memorable interactions occurred with like tourists and it's, it was everyone everyone in vietnam um all the foreigners were there for an adventure and i was like oh let me let me see if i can add value to their experience and my own because like when am I going to be able to talk to someone from Copenhagen or Denmark again? And when are they going to get the opportunity to talk to someone who is like literally fixes burning machinery for a living? So yeah. like, why, yeah. why not do this and then um, connect with them? And if I would date them, I date them if I don't. And it, it took me a little while to like have like the mentality of like this, it can go either way but I'm just going to focus on having a good time right now. And I did escalate with a few of them. But if they're like, no, just here for a vacation or whatever. Cool. Let's chill. And what was the most useful advice you received on the workshop that you could actually use in the in the real world later? Because obviously the workshop, you know, it's an interesting environment. There's other dudes. You soak up a lot. What was the stuff you could actually execute by yourself when it came to to dating and meeting ladies. The one that stuck in my mind the most was when you kind of described like what a woman's dating life is like, because I think you're a pretty interesting um, in terms of like other pickup and dating coaches in that you have feminine advice around you, feminine energy around you that you're not trying to like just all the time, pardon my French. So they, you have this insight into what their dating life is like. And one of the advice you gave me was like, for a woman dating, getting sex is very difficult for them because like if a woman wanted to date someone or she just wanted to have some sex or someone something like that she's got maybe uh, two options they use dating apps which don't always work out the best or date someone from their social circle which if they they, they just have sex with or they, they have a relationship and it fails and it blows them in their face now you've cut that social circle in half everyone has to choose a side and it gets messy so for a lot of women they are literally unconsciously dying for a guy who's charming engaging to just approach them and start a conversation with and that's like kind of the framework that i had in my head especially in vietnam too where the culture is like so different from the west and it's like very introverted i i actually asked some of the women i dated this is like a, a dating question i asked um even especially the one that i ended up um was i asked her what the dating is like i was yeah so i have to use dating apps or i have to know someone from like school my my, my college or uni days or mm. I have to like get a parent or, or I, I know like an uncle or an aunt or something. They, they introduce me to some guy and it's like super stressful because if it blows up in their face or the sex that day, the relationship fails, then like it's over. Right. So I had that framework when I was like approaching and talking to like a lot of the women, even the women on the tour group, because like it's an adventure, you know, why not date like a sexy American Asian foreigner and having like an interesting experience is like if it doesn't work out, I'm chill enough that I can just like vibe with it. Right, so before you were sitting alone in bars hoping for girls to talk to you and then what changed? Because you went on a lot of dates there, right? Yeah, 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 I went. You went had on content in the group all the time, like new girl, every, I was oh like, God. what's going on? There's a new girl in, <laughs> in our chat every day. What changed? Yeah. Why, was you, why were you suddenly able to manifest all these females into your bedroom and dinner tables and park benches. I, I think what changed was honestly getting out of my own way and believing that this is something that could actually work. I had to work in my fashion sense, fix everything up and just kind of think more like, how do I want to present myself? So that was immensely helpful and just getting out of my own way. And it, it's very painful. Um, <laughs> if approaching someone in your native language, like English is hard or whatever, try approaching someone in a language that you're kind of good at but not good at enough and so i remember going up to a lot of like ladies in um saigon or Danang, i was like uh, 
basically mean I like your fashion style and immediately right away they knew like yeah this guy's a foreigner he looks Vietnamese but he can barely he can kind of speak it and yeah. I think they found that kind of endearing a little bit like um, someone from another country probably America went out of their way to approach me and compliment me on my style and I remember a few approaches I did and dates that I went on that started like I like your style and they're like and then they're like pretty much after that pull out the Google Translate and then um, you, we went on a few dates and it was very endearing and, and they, they thought it was like very endearing. It kind of also ties back to like, well, what else, what other options do they have? Yeah. And, and honestly, a lot of times also like it just on um, they're like, no, no, busy or sure. they, they were at. Yeah. So it's like, how, how was it that you get rejected now? Because people are so afraid of rejection. What did you learn in a workshop I, about rejection? About rejection? It was and still is pretty devastating but it's not it's it, it, it's like the first rejection you get is like a kick to the nuts but after like your if you've been doing it for a while um and it's difficult for me because i'm on a ship and then i, I stop approaching because i'm on a ship and then, and then it's like riding a bike again you'll fall off the first couple times but then you'll learn you'll pick it back up and it goes from like being kicking the nuts to a punch in the face to a slap on the cheek it's just a slap on the wrist and it really comes down to being able to like being able to let go of like this pain and this thing i'm with like oh four eight billion people on the planet four billion of them are women maybe not all of them for me that's just what it is yeah so. perfect tell me about the dates because you know getting a number is one thing but being able to actually making a move and being masculine enough to not be afraid of going for the kiss and stuff is another thing did you feel any internal change about how you approach dating yeah I, I felt a lot of internal change prior to your program i had never been on a date like a legitimate date like a girl blocked off time of her night possibly on a friday to go on a date with me or like anything like that I, I talked with um some of your people on your team uh, liam and it was like you should try to approach or do something with her in the first hour or so like do uh, something program. means like, escalate right like try to kiss escalate because like she went on a date for a reason right she didn't go on the date to talk about her job or her life or what because she can do that with her parents or her brother or, or a mentor or something she went on that date because she found you attractive so be attractive and this is like another mindset i took away from your boot camp because you shifted it to the feminine perspective a little bit like she went on that day for a reason maybe she just wants to get to know you or maybe she just wants to like get out of the house i don't know you, you can't know until you try and if nothing else if you escalate and then you don't have to like go for the kiss straight away that makes no sense but just start with like um and it's a little bit difficult in a restaurant but that's why i kind of like go to multiple places move them around like Start at the bar, get some food, get something light or whatever, and then move it to a bar, move it to another bar, a dance club or whatever, which is Vietnam is super great because like everything is just on top of each other. Mm -hmm. So I did that and just escalating slowly, like, touch on the arm, touch on the leg. And then like if you're sitting next to each other at a bar, wrap your hand around her waist. And then like a real move is like um, putting on her leg and then like moving it up slowly. And actually the girl I ended up um, having sex with um i was at the bar with her i think the first date the first day we were at the bar i was like moving my hands up on her arms shoulders lower back leg and everything she's like stop it stop it was kind of like the way she said it she didn't was like stop it i do not want this right now she wasn't like no yeah it's like but she was like stop I'm like why are you like this and it's kind of playful and then like within and why were you like this what made you what gave you permission to be like that Sounds like a, a new version of you, no? Yeah, it was a very new version because prior to that, I was like, got to be super respectful, respect their space and everything. But it was like the shift in my head is like, okay, let me war game it from her perspective. She's on this date with me for a reason. If she wanted to talk about culture, bars, she can yeah. do that with any one of her friend groups. You know, she is there because she wants to be desired. She wants a guy to like be attracted to her and show her that he is attracted to her. And that's what I did. And it's not something you communicate with your words. You can't just sit interview styles like, I like your breasts. I like the way your legs look. It's not, that's not what she's looking for. And like, show her, like you can talk about it or you can show her. And I also get it from the feminine perspective, which is 
really cool from your perspective as well as you're like around models and people who you and women who you talk to what their what, um, what their perspective is like they want to also kind of have like not necessarily no responsibility to sexual interaction but they want to um be able to give themselves the excuse like he just swept me off my feet he just seduced me i had yeah. no choice in this but really she's still there on the date if she really didn't want anything to do with you a you probably wouldn't have gotten her ig or her phone number or her whatsapp or whatever and b if she didn't really want to be with you she would have ended the date after like the first meal together it's like all right well this was nice are you gonna are you gonna get an uber home i'm gonna take an uber home separate ways and it would be professional like that um but like i think the scariest moment for me was like after the um the girl that i ended up having sex with we we started off with coffee uh, yeah we started off with coffee it started at 3 p.m and then we were sitting next to each other but very close and it was i was still like just lightly touching her arm i wasn't seriously escalating because it, it was the sun was still up and you know that's kind of the sun goes down things get weird but then we went to dinner and then we went for drinks at one place and went to drinks for another place um I didn't have sex with her at night, but I think like just every time I moved her from one place, the coffee place to the dinner place, to the next bar, to the next club or whatever, it was kind of like a, a gut check for her. The, the interaction it was like, cause it, every time it's like she has the perfectly legitimate excuse, like, oh, it's getting late. I got to go home now. But every time I moved her like that, it was like, you could go one of two ways. Either she is not into me and she goes home, fair enough, or she is into me and she's going to go with me. But either way, it's a good, good way to like, check that interaction right there and then so that neither of you are wasting your time cool but she was into me she was obviously well not, not only her from what i've seen it's interesting because you did both kind of forms of coaching you did the five days live in bulgaria where we're on the streets every day where we work with roleplay girls where we do a fashion makeover where you also got uh, your instagram photos finally and then you also signed up for the social transformation program which is the the six months mentoring or which is the multiple months mentoring program. What for you was the difference and the pluses on, on each? I'm curious because you experienced both. The immersion was like value density. So it was just like you're getting fed from a fire hydrant, as we say in America sometimes. So it was just like value upon value upon value. Not everything um, sponges in right away. The social transformation program was super valuable because like I was able to sit there and watch your videos like, like this is how it's done. This is the texting guide, uh, especially the most recent one you released, I think a few months back, the um, the touch escalation one. That was super helpful. But I think like the, the thing that was um, a real, real gem was the Telegram group. Because I could see other guys who were going through the same thing, or maybe they're a little bit ahead of me in terms of like setting up dates and just having crazy <laughs> sexual experiences. And then guys who are just starting out and then everyone just really supporting each other. And also like the constant messages that would pop up like, hey, how do I do this? Or I just went on a date with this chick. And it's super inspiring to see that. And it's like, you know what? If these guys can do that and step out of their comfort zone, I myself today can go out, go just walk down the street in Saigon, see a bar in a hostel. Yeah. yeah, see like a, a cute German girl sitting in a, a little juice bar in a hostel and like go, go up, get a juice, talk to her because she's probably got an interesting story. She's obviously not from Vietnam. So it was like, turns out she was backpacking through Southeast Asia for 11 months. And now I think she's following and we've communicated. And this is one of the tricky parts too, but honestly, the from the, the immersion versus the um, social transformation program perspective, the follow on delivers more value because it's kind of like an accountability check. Are you wow. stepping out of your comfort zone? Right. It stretches out and you can actually learn and then execute, learn, execute over over multiple months. Yeah, I, I love the online coaching. I really love the Telegram group. It's very active. It's, it's, it's much better than I ever expected it to be, to be honest. Because guys are meeting up now. I'm sure you yeah. read like dudes meeting up in Warsaw and Bucharest and Zurich. People booking events together, organizing yoga classes together now. So <laughs> it's crazy. It's very cool. What are you excited about for your future? knowing what you know now excited for myself i have a better grasp and understanding of like social freedom and social skills so i can um, put myself out of my comfort zone because um right now i'm currently in dallas worked pretty well in vietnam but it's like so culturally sensitive it really depends on where you are yeah um but like in the u.s i'm gonna have to rely more on social skills like code approach and just going up and talking to someone just because of kind of the way i look and our you know i can't change that i'm asian and short it's just mm -hmm. what it is so obviously dating apps are going to eliminate me out of the pool pretty instantly but 
they can't eliminate my social skills or my, my ability to go up to a beautiful woman and say, hey, I think you're beautiful or I think you're cute or whatever the opener I decide to use is and try to have an engaging conversation because when else is she going to be able to talk to someone who does what I do, had the life experiences I've had? Or when else is she going to be able to just like vibe with a complete stranger? And if she wants, we go on a date, it'd be f awesome. F yeah. But uh, if not, if she rejects me out right, right away, I'm good with it either way. I think that's the biggest shift in mindset I've had since the Vietnam trip, the, the, the whole manifesting and living in abundance thing, because I remember like prior to that, a lot of my interactions like, oh, I really hope this works out. I took so much uh, social energy to step out of my introversion shell and go up and talk to you. And so I was overly emotionally invested in a random conversation with a stranger, but post Vietnam, I was like, cool you want to talk or whatever or have a just just chill or let's go on an instant grab grab like a coffee at a starbucks or something i'm good either way and it's like it's helped actually tremendously with a lot of interactions that i've i've had post vietnam and it's like the the manifesting the living in abundance thing but you kind of have to you kind of have to go through the the, the shit eating phase yeah. until you can get to that but i'm still like pretty early on in my journey so it, i'm looking forward to it i'm looking forward to like the person i'll be who i'm on day in the next two three five years decades even yeah it's powerful what you said that i mean i like that you have the humil humility and understanding of like this sexual market place yeah online dating rewards tall dudes who just have good genetics but the guys who work on their charisma and, and approaching skills get rewarded by the results basically what about your social media because a lot of guys i work with they start saying i don't want an instagram i don't want to work on this stuff and i understand it can be a very addictive place or shallow and people often don't really get how powerful it can be for dating how was that for you and how do you use Instagram now? Well, I use it now as a tool. Like literally when I mentioned like I'm blue collar, I care if it works, I don't really care how it looks like and that kind of influenced my fashion sense. And that same philosophy and change of framework and mindset I take to my social media now, like this is how I present myself to the world. It's like better than a business card because people get to see what you're doing and what you've done live action. Yeah. That's tremendously powerful. So I went through, with your help, I went through like a lot of my social media and like my Instagram and like just archived a ton of stuff and like this doesn't make sense for like what what girl is gonna get turned on by this or why would she date you if you have like these pictures here I think I had a few pictures of just like some random sunsets or whatever which can be nice yeah. but like come on everyone <laughs> has those if it were a sunset on a yacht with 10 model silhouettes in there and then they see your silhouette there that's a cool sunset but if it's just a random ass sunset, how does this make sense? Yeah. <laughs> so it's just like applying that litmus test to a lot of my social media. And then after I actually got several really awesome reviews because um, from my social media when I was doing cold approaching in Vietnam, like I was like, oh, hey, do you use Instagram or Facebook or anything like that? And like, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm I have an Instagram and we swap Instagram and then I, I go on the date and everything later. and yeah ladies go through your social media facebook instagram or whatever with a fine tooth comb then from there they would decide if they want to go on a date with you and i think that's the <laughs> that my social media gave me more of a uh, more more status than i those are the photos than, yeah. took, uh working with us right yeah some of the photos i took working with you some of the photos i also took in vegas i worked with another dating coach here in america and they took some more photos and there was I kind of like combine everything together, put everything together in a way that made sense. And I also like had some photos from my work as well, because it's pretty interesting. It's some pictures of um, me and my college days and my little um, merchant mariner uniform. And it was like, chicks love a guy in uniform. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? So, Classic, yeah. archetype. It was cool. And uh, like the social media aspect of it definitely helped a lot. And I can actually, it, me as an introvert as well, I don't email and reach out to people. I just post stuff on my instagram stories and from there i can tell like if someone's still engaged and i think like there was several photos uh, i posted that drew like a ton of engagement and it's like so much more expedient and efficient way of like hanging on to um contact information especially yeah. if you're dating so they can see what you're up to it's it's a wonderful tool there are like you know toxic aspects of it it can become too addictive but your social media wasn't put together you're doing yourself a disservice. Mm. What inspires me about your story is you are short, you are Asian, you work on a ship, you know, you had no sense for fashion, you had no social media, and you made it work. 
Like that's incredible. You took the advice, you put it into action. You, you didn't complain a single time about your situation. You were always positive and you just execute. And then you got results. No uh, offense, but if, if Dan can get results as the short dude who works on a ship, like everybody can get results. You gotta put in the work, you gotta put in the work. And I think that's like very true in life, dating, whatever context, um, especially as a guy, uh, sexual marketplace all the things how willing are you to take out a spoon and eat shit yeah and um like just execute and yeah you're gonna get rejected you're gonna get blowouts and you're gonna have sometimes hilarious rejections at the time they're gonna seem like mortifying like i will never socially recover from this at all but then like i looking back oh man i remember one of the approaches i don't know if it made it into your video or not but i think um i accidentally approached the same group of girls twice in one day and it was just outside that little park in the little Starbucks area as they're walking in. I had forgotten I approached them earlier in the day at a, some other random location. And I was like, I walked like, hey, it's I great, like you. They're like, ah, we, you've already done, you've already used this line on us. You've uh, already approached us. But they were laughing about it. And I was like, I have? And then I was like, I was laughing about it too. I was like, oh, shoot. Well, I guess my <laughs> charm is, I got no game then. And then they just, they were just, they, they were, maybe they were laughing at me a little bit, but whatever. Yeah, People yeah you, you made their day. They could laugh at you and then you took it, it's fine. It's very inspiring for everybody watching, you know, it's like there is really a strategy that if you apply it, you get results. If it takes a while, that's fine. If it's gonna be cringe, that's fine. If you have to move to a country to, you know, what did I do? I didn't do all of this in my village in Austria. I didn't do it in Vienna even. I moved around and met ladies from a different world to, to get to where I am and build my abilities and, and status and really my communication skills in, in many places. Yeah, any last words or things you want to share or advice you want to give to people who know they could do better, who are not 100% happy with their dating life or maybe even miserable and they're sitting at home, they're watching a lot of videos, they're watching my channel, they're watching maybe psych hacks and stuff, they read books. What are you telling these people at home? I guess I would tell them be honest with yourself. You can read all, all the books you want, consume all the content that you want, but nothing is going to substitute action. Like you can't quote Nancy Friday at a woman and expect her to get horny. That's not how that works. Execution is one thing. You can work hard and you can also work smart. So you can go out and do code approaches, all the things for the next five years, or you can work with someone whose literal bread and butter it is to get dating, to, to work on social skills and coach guys and you can shortcut it and you can learn but execution will be required execution on your part action on your part will be required but you can also get further and faster with some expertise on your side and i think that's what the like the, the social transformation program was immensely helpful for that because i have that continual link and nice. and i think it's it's far out especially with the telegram group it is far like outpaced whatever amount of money i put down for it yeah yeah perfect that's good yeah any last words anything else you want to share if a five foot two short asian engineer can go on dates and live an amazing life unless you're like brain dead and a vegetable you have no excuses well some people they act like they're vegetable yeah <laughs> Okay. Well, thanks, Dang. I really appreciate you coming on, taking the time. Hope to run into you at some live meetup that we do with the with the STP program. Thanks again. Keep going. Keep us. Keep updating us with your adventures in the group, and, and see you soon. What a story! I'm so inspired by Dang, and this is why I love my job. I love helping people through these transformations. Sometimes all it needs is a little nudge, and sometimes it needs a complete makeover, like we saw in Dang's story. If you're inspired, as I mentioned before, I added one of the last workshop spots of this entire year, 2024, onto the schedule. You find all the details below. You can book a free consultation call if you think it might be for you. No strings attached. We will listen to you, we'll listen to your story and tell you what we think is best for you to transform your dating life, your social life and get the results you, you really want. Click below, book a call and I'll see you in the next video.